Medical gaslighting can be devastating for those who experience it. It can make us lose faith in our medical services and in the possibility of recovery. Have you ever found yourself in a doctor's office struggling to explain your health concerns only to be met with skepticism, doubt, or even dismissive responses? You're not alone. It's an experience that far too many of us have faced. In this video, I'll define what medical gaslighting is, share some examples of it, and highlight the red flags you should look out for. And as a bonus, at the end of this video, I'm gonna share powerful tips you can use today to better advocate for yourself. What is medical gaslighting? This is when a healthcare professional dismisses, trivializes, or invalidates a patient's concern. This results in the patient doubting their own experience. Let me give you some examples. The medical professional denies or downplays your experience. Let's say we have Sarah, who has been dealing with chronic pain in her lower back. She has sought medical help and visited several doctors hoping to find relief. However, every time she describes her pain, she's met with responses like, it's all in your head, or you're overreacting. She's been told she's stressed or has anxiety. Over time, Sarah starts to wonder if maybe she is making it all up. Maybe the pain is all in her head. Another example is that the medical professional ignores your symptoms. They don't run tests or offer solutions. They simply ignore it. Let's say Sarah has terrible pain, but because it's chronic, she's learned to push through and function even with that high level of pain. When she's in the doctor's office, they ask her, where is your pain on a scale of one to 10? She thinks about it and shares, it's really bad, it, an eight, let's say. The doctor kind of looks at her skeptically and then explains that an eight is barely functional. She wouldn't be in their office if she had a level eight of pain. This form of gaslighting is more about the persistent dismissal of a person's pain, making them feel as if they're exaggerating or imagining their discomfort. Over time, Sarah stops seeking help. Deep down, she's afraid that maybe she's just being dramatic. Another example is that the medical professional contradicts your experience. They will often reflect back to you the exact opposite of what you're feeling. Let's say Sarah finally finds a doctor who wants to run some tests and get to the bottom of her pain. Her doctor calls her and announces with joy and happiness, her test results are normal. What a relief. Sarah feels confused and disappointed, but doesn't know why. The doctor tells her, you should be happy about this. Trust me, this is really good news. The doctor treats her as if she's healed simply because she doesn't match up with a specific diagnosis. Sarah hangs up the phone and feels worse. She thinks to herself, what's wrong with me? Why am I not happy about this? And why doesn't that test show anything? Of course, she should be glad she doesn't have the thing that they were testing for, but it can also feel invalidating. I have friends in the chronic illness community who could barely be hanging on, not even able to function, and their doctor will be like, your test results are normal, yay, you're all good. And they're clearly not good. But because we don't have a test result indicating what's going on, the doctor treats them as if they should feel good about their situation. They're healthy, except nothing has really changed for them. Next, let's go over key red flags that are often overlooked and can help you assess whether or not you're being gaslit by a medical provider. First up, the doctor rushes you through a visit. I know their schedules are tight, but if you feel like there's no time to ask questions or to show them what's going on with you, or they talk super fast and ask you questions one after the other in short succession, that's a red flag. It's also a red flag if they interrupt you. We often wait weeks, if not months, for an appointment, and it can be frustrating when we try to share what's going on and they talk over us. If your medical provider doesn't let you fully answer their questions or if they cut you off to tell you what they think is going on, that's a red flag. A red flag that I have heard of a lot in our community and seen in my own life is when a doctor shows bias. An example could be that we come in for stomach pain, but they don't run any tests and tell us we need to lose weight. Blaming our symptoms on our weight instead of ruling out other possibilities. They could also be biased against us because of our religion or the color of our skin. In my own life, I've seen ageism be an issue when my papa was struggling with his COPD. Many doctors would rush him through appointments 
tell him, you know, he was getting older anyways, and he should just keep using the inhaler that he already had. It took them forever to get him an oxygen tank, and it felt like to us they were like waiting for him to die. It was terrible. They just kept putting it off. And so for one of his appointments, my mom went with him and asked the questions that I had prepared. I'd done a ton of research online, and I told her, do not let the doctor leave until they've answered each and every one of them. And I honestly think that it made my papa feel good that I was helping and advocating for him because he felt talked over and he felt like they didn't take him seriously and they just kept saying, well, you are getting older. It turned out that there was another type of inhaler, totally different from the one he was using, that he could try out. And they hadn't even offered it to him, I think because it was newer and probably more expensive. And it gave him so much more relief. So be pushy, people, or let someone be your pushy person. Because remember, the doctor works for you. Another red flag is when they tell you it's all in your head. Obviously, this one is more egregious, but it still needs to be mentioned because it minimizes our pain. And last time I checked, our head was attached to our bodies and can be treated as well. So wherever the symptoms are coming from, it should still be looked into. No physician should say this to a patient. And if yours has, it might be time to find someone else. The last red flag I have for you today is when they question the validity of your answers or even your medical history. They may ask you what medications you've tried or how long you've been experiencing the symptoms and they don't think you're recalling the information correctly. They'll often ask follow-up questions like, are you sure it's been that long or none of those medications worked for you? That doesn't really make sense to me. Those are red flags. You are the patient. This is your history, and they shouldn't be questioning the legitimacy of it. They are there to help you, and acting as if you're lying or exaggerating your symptoms isn't right. Huge red flag. As promised, let's get into the things that we can do to stop medical gaslighting dead in its tracks. First, it's important to think of gaslighting as a loop or a circuit. For the circuit to complete and for gaslighting to take place, it has to go through two people. Not only does the gaslighter, in this case a medical professional, have to tell us it's not that bad, but we have to start questioning ourselves. This is when the gaslighting affects us, when we start wondering if we should believe what they're saying. In other words, gaslighting can only take place when an individual believes the doubt that has been sown. So here's what we can do. The first step is to recognize that we hold that power, to not be fooled. Even if a doctor ignores our symptoms, we don't have to keep seeing them or accept their statements. We don't have to let their comments affect our perception of our experience. I know that can be hard to do, so here are some other tips that can help move us along. First, I want you to look into a network of supportive friends and family. It offers emotional support validation, advocacy, and a sense of empowerment that will significantly improve our ability to navigate these challenges. I recommend bringing someone from your support network to your appointments so that they can advocate on your behalf when you're unable to, kind of like my mom did for my papa. Next, we can work on building up our self-esteem. Individuals with a higher self-esteem tend to have greater self-confidence and trust in their own judgments. When faced with gaslighting attempts, we are more likely to maintain our self-assurance and trust our own perceptions and memories. People with a healthy self-esteem are also more assertive in communicating their needs and boundaries. They're less likely to accept manipulative behavior and more inclined to confront a gaslighter when they sense something's amiss. And finally, take note of those medical gaslighting tactics and red flags we talked about today. If you see someone doing it, call it out. Request they change the way they're speaking to you. End the appointment. Or look for another doctor altogether. Just remember, we all deserve to feel seen and heard in our medical appointments. If you don't feel like that's happening, speak up so that you can get the care you deserve. 